Today, I'm wearing four different watches, two smart watches and two fitness trackers. I have this goal that by the end of the year, I wanna run my very first marathon. So I wanna find out which watch should I use to train with for the next eight months. I'm wearing the Garmin Forerunner 965, the Samsung Galaxy Watch 5, the Apex 2 Pro, and the Apple Watch Ultra. Watches that are pretty good for running or amazing for running. We're gonna find out today. I'm going to rank them today on seven different categories. One, sleep tracking and recovery. Two, distance and pacing accuracy. Three, music controls. Four, heart rate accuracy. Five, fashion and durability. Six, battery life. And seven, price. Let's rewind to this morning to talk about sleep. So we are actually in bed right now with four watches. It's the only thing I really sleep with these days. <laughs> <laughs> testing the sleep tracking and recovery features like how well can it track my start and end sleep times as well as like quote unquote recovery score the garmin watch got seven hours and 54 minutes of sleep gave me a quality of fair plenty of deep sleep the samsung watch here gave me eight hours and 49 minutes with a sleep score of 72 and gave me blood oxygen no snoring so that's cool it has snoring detection which the other devices do not the coros watch gave me 100 percent running recovery 10 38 p.m to 7 27 a.m eight hours and 30 30 minutes of sleep but only 16 minutes awake time so i think this was definitely the most inaccurate out of all of them for that one night and then lastly the apple watch it gave me an 11 41 p.m to 7 57 a.m sleep times a week for only eight minutes so this was also off which is interesting overall all the watches missed my sleep time as well as my wake time by like 20 minutes i came in bed scrolled a little bit and then when i woke up i was awake and i kind of moved around a little bit and these were the sleep times that each device gave me so as you can see it was definitely off by 10 to 20 minutes the scroll time kind of gets added as sleep time but i don't think there's an actual watch out there can actually measure your sleep time very well to so take all this info with a grain of salt. In terms of sleep tracking, the winner will go to the Apple Watch because it was eight minutes and 15 minutes off on the going to bed time and waking up time, whereas the other watches were up to 15 to 25 minutes off. We're currently at the track right now. I'm gonna do 1600 meters, which is four laps, and see how close each of these devices can get to these numbers. A couple of these have a track mode option, whereas I don't think the Samsung Watch does out of the four. The one benefit of the Apple Watch is when you show up to the track and you're already in a run workout, you can actually switch the track mode automatically. It'll ask you which lane you're in, whereas the other watches, you actually have to stop the workout and start a new track workout. And supposedly they should be accurate down to the meter, but I wanna test that to see, can they get it right? They get one shot, one opportunity. This is it. A lot of people in the comments have been saying my running form is bad, I'm a heel striker. So I went and got my running checked. This video on that is coming soon. But hopefully my running form is a little bit better in this video. We'll see, we'll see. Well. One thing I learned from DC Rainmakers videos is that you actually want to keep the watches pretty far apart to make sure the GPS is pretty accurate and they're not interfering with each other. As the fifth running watch, I'm going to be using my iPhone. This has multi-band GPS, which should hopefully make it more accurate. And then I'm using a chest heart rate monitor right here connected to my phone. So that's a great alternative if you don't want to buy a wrist-worn device. Now I'm going to start the workouts on each watch. I'll walk you through what it's like to start the actual track mode. Some of them I can wait for GPS before I start the run. The other ones I will need to pause on the screen on the Samsung watch, for example. This is the Garmin watch. We're going to hit start. Go to track run and now it's going to wait for gps we are ready so that took about three seconds next is the samsung watch you will have to use the touch screen so wet hands or with gloves will be kind of hard but we're going to swipe over to workout we're going to hit more they don't have a track feature all right so we're going to say running three two one pause Okay, so there's a three second gap right and next we got the chorus watch we're gonna hit track run which is down here it's gonna i get to pick my lane with the one in one 400 meter gps locked so that took about three to four seconds now onto the apple watch press the action button outdoor run is the same as a track workout i select outdoor run it knows that i'm at a track i'm gonna say choose lane lane one confirm it's gonna wait for gps and there we go it took maybe five seconds so maybe a second or more than the chorus and garmin and then when i'm ready i'm gonna press the action button to start and the last one is the iphone plus the polar heart rate strap so we select running looks like we got gps and heart Heart rate, so I'm gonna tap start and pause here. And once we're ready to run, I'm actually gonna continue. So we're gonna start from this line. I'm gonna start all the watches and then I'm gonna run and then I'll stop here and stop them all. Start, 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 go. And I should get lap updates as I do each 400 meters. So let's find out how accurate they are. Oh no, <laughs> Apple Watch didn't start. Okay, I'm gonna pause here for a second. I just finished one lap, come over here. I'm trying to hit start on the Apple Watch. Right, I hit the orange button. It gives me the orange screen of death. So I literally just ran a lap and nothing happened. So this is one of the biggest downsides. I don't know, every other Apple Watch update, this doesn't work for some reason. Let's continue, three more laps. Coming on the half mile marker. Let's see if they get it right. Yep, Apple Watch just buzzed 400 meters. 0.5 on Coros, 0.59 Samsung, 880 meters on Garmin. Coming up on the 1200 meter mark. Garmin 1240, Coros 0.75. Apple Watch got it. Is the track accurate? It is? All right, 1640. 0.99, so Samsung here keeps like freezing out. Like I'm trying to slide. 
Pause. 1.45 on the Samsung, that's way off. 0.99 on the Coros, that's very close. 0.74 on the Apple Watch, that's very close, considering you missed the first lap. And, oh, this is hard. 1640 on the Garmin, even with track mode, which is really weird. That's way off, by 40 meters. Not good, Garmin, what are you doing? Looks like Coros won this round on the track mode. Getting the closest, as well as starting and stopping at the right time. But the Apple Watch didn't start that first lap, and like, having an action button that doesn't work, I don't know. That's, it's unacceptable. Having an action button that doesn't work is unacceptable. If Apple Watch worked, it would be great. Stopping and starting on the, the Samsung is the worst. The Garmin and the Coros are easiest because it's start, stop, one button, same exact button. The Apple Watch start, stop is either the action button or you press the action button plus any other button. So that's a little frustrating because like when you're tired and exhausted, you just want to press to go, press to stop, keep it simple, keep it easy. We need to think about, oh, start is one button, stop is like another combination of buttons. It gets a little confusing. So that's a loss for Apple there too. Okay, uh, iPhone, 1.03 miles. I forgot to stop it. iPhone, Coros, and Apple Watch had the best accuracy distances wise. But start stop on the iPhone is the hardest out of all of them. Honestly, Apple Watch, man, it was my favorite. Why is it gotta lose? Oh, you're recording? I'm gonna switch to Team Coros. So, Coros, you looking for a sponsored athlete? Hit me up. Next up, let's head out. After run sometimes, especially when I'm running with a group, I like to get food, coffee, or something. If I don't bring my phone or wallet, it's nice to have Apple Pay. I know Samsung has something similar, but that's just like a lifestyle feature. We're not gonna talk about that in this video, but it's just so helpful to have my wallet on my wrist. Let's go get some acai bowls. Good, how about you? Nutrition and hydration are important, so I'm gonna eat this, and then we're gonna do a test inside of Manhattan to see how accurate can these watches be when we're running around with tall buildings everywhere. And then we'll do a third and final test where we're actually gonna just run on the West Side Highway, which is like more open, and we're gonna use a measuring wheel to make sure like down to the millimeter accuracy on these watches. Mm. Battery update. It's been four hours since I took these devices off the chargers. They were at 100% this morning, 9 a.m. It is now 1 p.m. in the afternoon. Garmin, 97%. Samsung, 84%. No way. Coros, 100%. Apple Watch, 76%. So the Coros is winning. Garmin is second place. Samsung, then Apple. It looks like so far, Coros has won two of these battles and Apple Watch has won one. Let's see what happens at the end of today. Okay, so we are currently outside in New York now. We're gonna run through Manhattan. It's a little bit hard because you have to stop at each of the streetlights and this isn't gonna be perfect, but I got the measuring wheel and we're gonna go half a mile down, half a mile back. As you can tell, these buildings are relatively tall. So it should impact the GPS negatively. We'll do once walking and I'll actually measure an outdoor walk on all these devices and then we'll run the exact same distance without the wheel with all the watches to see if it can match that one mile or not. Oh wait, we need to reset the wheel just to prove it to you. So it's a zero feet right there. All right, here we go. Who would have thought we'd be walking through the streets in New York with a measuring wheel. What am I doing with my life right now? 2,000 feet, 600 more to go. And there we go, we made it halfway. All right, let's turn around. Looks like the Garmin and the Apple Watch were the best when it comes to these tall buildings. Samsung was the worst and Coros was like in the middle. So we gotta remember, we're, we're running back to that garage door. All right. We good. We just hit 5280 again, so this is gonna be the start and the finish line. I'm gonna try to run down and back and see if the watches match up. Bam. All right, we just hit a one mile distance. The Garmin is at 1.01. The Samsung at 1.19, so it's 0.2 over. The Coros is at 1.1, so it's 0.1 over. And the Apple Watch is at 0.99. So the Garmin and the Apple Watch are the closest. They're definitely 0 0.01 over than the actual number though. Now I'm gonna run the same one mile we just did. Wearing all the watches. I don't know why I'm so embarrassed. Let's see how close they get. Here we go. One of the downsides is we're gonna have to stop at some of these lights. <laughs> One mile. All right, we'll start from worst to best. Worst was the Samsung at 1.48 miles. Added an extra half mile to my running time. I guess that helps my pace. The Coros got 1.03, so a little bit off. And then the Apple Watch was right on the money, 1.00 miles, and the Garmin was 0 0.099, so very, very, very close. The Garmin and Apple Watch probably won this round. And the iPhone got 1.07, so not sure why. Maybe because this is in my pocket. It wasn't really like getting very accurate GPS data. Now we're gonna run closer to the west of the highway where I don't have to stop, and there's probably more view to the sky and see if there's any difference when we do it out there. Let's head on over. I'm gonna start all the watches. Samsung is the hardest to start. And we're about to walk a whole mile. Half a mile down, half a mile back. I don't know what it is about the wheel, but everyone keeps looking at me. In New York, no one will look at you, but for some reason, this bright wheel, everyone's just looking at me. Fun fact of the day, west side highway is where like the most attractive people run, and then there's me. Garmin's the only one spot on, the other ones are 0 0.01 or 0 0.02 off. Pretty good. Since we're taking this little stroll together, I'll talk about music and integration. All four watches support Bluetooth headphones, which is nice. But if you have the Samsung one, the Galaxy Buds are just like better integrated. And the Apple Watch, you have AirPods, it's just better integrated. It automatically connects. You don't have to worry about like going to Bluetooth settings and connecting it. 
So that's a win for the two smart devices. But then the other issue is when it comes to playing music back. Right? If you want to play music on the Garmin, you have to actually download it from Spotify by downloading the Spotify app and then downloading the playlist that you want. So you need to make sure you have the music on the watch beforehand, or you can control the music on your phone from the watch. It's still a little clunky though. I'm not the biggest fan. Chorus watch is probably the worst one out of them. You have to actually download MP3s. Not sure what that is. Not sure how those work. I don't use LimeWire anymore. That's like a no-go for me. I'm not probably not going to listen to music like that. I'll just bring my phone and stream Spotify or Apple Music. And the Samsung watch, you have music on there. You can stream as well. If you get the LTE model, I'm pretty sure you can stream. And then the Apple watch is probably the best one out of all of them because you can use Apple Music, Spotify, and do it all through cellular. It does absolutely drain your battery, so be mindful of that. You might be able to get one long run in and, and the watch dies. I would bring my phone for the most part if I want to play music, but if I want to get away with it for like 30 minutes to an hour and a half long runs, you could probably stream music on your Apple Watch without having to download it and you have a full selection of everything you want in the world. So in terms of music, Apple Watch wins. In terms of headphone integration with AirPods and being able to stream at any point. Can I talk about heart rate here? So obviously the best way to get the most accurate heart rate is to use a chest strap. I like the Polar one. Uh, there's also a Garmin one too. Optical heart rate monitor sensors, which are the ones that use light on your wrists, are not the best, especially when you're moving around. The weight and how tight they are can really impact the readings. And your skin color, tattoos, hair, all this stuff, the weather, the temperature can impact how well it's able to read your heart rate. So if you're doing any heart rate based training, I wear my chest strap, but overall, like all the watches are decent enough where you can kind of get a vague idea. Rob has done a lot of things and he's found out that the Apple watch for the most part is best in most scenarios. So go check out his channel. Maybe if he wants my data, I'll send it over. Rob, let me know. And we can do an analysis of a chest strap versus my Apple watches and all the other watches. It'd be very interesting. Now that we've enjoyed this uh, lovely little walk together today, we're almost at 52.80, bam. One mile on the Apple watch, 0.99 on the Coros, 0.99 on the Samsung, one mile on the Garmin. So Garmin, Apple were spot on. Koros and Samsung were 0.01 off. It seems like so far, running on the west of the highway is gonna get more accurate data. Just because there's more view to the skies, you can see that there's not as many tall buildings. So if you live in the suburbs or you're running out here, you're more than likely gonna get much more accurate data than when you're running in the city over there. Bam, bam, bam. What, resume workout fail? <laughs> All right, the Apple Watch again, being buggy. Let's see how close we get to one mile. 0 0.49, 0 0.49, 0 0.50, 0.50. Wow, very close. One mile, stopping the Apple Watch with all these buttons, it didn't work again. So that's frustrating a little bit. But overall, I'm gonna have to give the win to Garmin and Koros on this one. They did really well in this outdoor condition. Samsung's just not having it today. And a big part of running, I think, is getting a little bit of strength training and mobility work. Should I even wear these watches while doing that? Is, is anyone better than the other? Let's head inside. Now we're at the gym, and when the weather's bad, if I'm trying to do low steady state cardio, I like to use a treadmill. On the Woodways, there's no integration with any smart devices other than like Ant Plus, so like the chest heart rate strap. But on the Life Fitness over there, I can actually integrate with uh, Apple Watch Gym Kit and the Samsung watch, which is cool, and I'll send the exact distance pacing to my watches, which is really nice and you just tap, scan, and it'll automatically send that data to the watch. So that's the best part about these smartwatches. I love that like full on integration. But the Garmin and the Coros, after you're done running, you can enter in how much you ran and make sure that the distance is accurate on the watches once you're done running. <clears throat> we're at the gym right now and typically the watch that I prefer to use is the Apple Watch. I think for strength training, it has the best heart rate accuracy. But you don't really need to watch any strength training. You just need something to tell you how many reps you're doing, get the weights, and then just show you trends over time. So there are some really nice apps on the Apple Watch that do that, third-party apps. The Garmin does have some features and then Whoop has some really good strength building stuff. The Samsung stuff also has, it's a little bit complex. Koros doesn't have as much strength training features, but I think a lot of this stuff takes a high effort to just get going. So it's not really worth investing the time to make it happen. Just like use a piece of paper. Like the value you get out of tracking like each specific muscle and reps is just too much effort I feel like sometimes. If I were to pick a winner for strength training, it'd be the Apple Watch because you can get people to create the workouts for you and just show up to the gym, press start, and then hit next, next, next. And it's just that effortless strength training that I can get on the Apple Watch via these like third party apps is absolutely insane. Let's get a workout montage in. And then we're gonna finish up with price and battery life awards. All my life I've barely spoken. Your words have been so broken. I've been under your hypnosis. Why did I sip that potion? I'm so done with holy ghosting. My birth, it is an omen. Lay me down up in the ocean. Battery update. It's been eight hours since I put these watches off the charger. And we'll start from best to worst. The Coros is at 96%, Garmin 91%, Samsung at 
59%, Apple Watch at 51%. So as you can see, the smart watches definitely die much faster. The fitness watches die much slower. Koros is probably hands down the best battery life just because it has like this black and whitish red screen. So it's just gonna last a lot longer. The Garmin has the second best battery life because it's got a color and brighter screen. And then the Samsung, and then last the Apple Watch Ultra. I think the smart watches have a better charging experience. Whereas the Koros and the Garmin, you have to like plug it in and it's just like not the most ideal experience. So in terms of battery life, the award goes to Koros because it just dominates everyone else. All right, when it comes to design, I would say the Koros and the Garmin and the Apple Watch have this like rugged look, like outdoor feel, whereas the Samsung is more like a clean aesthetic as a smartwatch. Probably something I'd wear going out, whereas the other ones like show off, like they say, hey, I like to work out. I like to, you know, do fitness things. So if you want to give off that image and that brand, then these are the watches that kind of match that style. I don't know, people buy watches for their looks. I think it's a tool. It's supposed to get the job done, but you know, if it doesn't match your outfit, the Garmin and the Koros might not be for you. And maybe a uh, sexy, sleek Samsung or Apple Watch Series 8 might be the one to go with. Or, you just wear these watches when you work out and then you just take it off the rest of the day and wear a smartwatch during the other part of the day. That's like the, the other best case scenario. What'd you say about the Garmin watch? What do you think of the screen and the and the menus? It looks like a video game, but like, I don't know, not in a good way. Everything is just so intense. Training readiness, HRV status, notification. There's something about the Samsung, I actually just don't like it. Really? Why? It just looks so cheap to me. Oh, this one's super light. The Garmin's lighter than the Koros? I think so. Change the font on this. Give it a little spinny thing, I guess then you get this. So the Apple Watch is a combination of the Garmin and the Koros. So the Apple Watch wins, yeah, Apple Watch wins. Okay, one thing I've heard to mention is the bands. Make sure to get a band that's like Velcro, because if you have a silicone one and you get sweaty and wet, it's going to kind of feel uncomfortable, and you could get like different things on your wrist that you don't want. Now when we talk about brightness of displays, and not sure why I'm whispering, the Apple Watch destroys everyone else. But for the most part, the newest Garmin's and the Samsung, you can see, and then with the Coros, if you turn on that backlight, you're able to see it in daylight. So I had, didn't have any issues in the bright sun when we were outside, but the Apple Watch is just gorgeous. Just the colors and the brightness is like next level. So Apple wins the display trophy. Now, when we're speaking on price and value, the Samsung, it's Android only. If you have a Samsung phone, even better. Starts at 219 and goes up to like $400. So a wide range. The Coros Apex 2 Pro is $450. You can get a cheaper model as well. And then the next level up from that is the Garmin 4965, and that is $600. And then the beast of a price is the Apple Watch Ultra at $800. So you can almost buy like three of these watches for an Apple Watch Ultra. Most of the top tier watches are gonna be around like $400 to $600. And then the top, top tier are like seven to $900. So in terms of price, I'm gonna have to give it to the Samsung just because it's so much cheaper than everyone else. And it kind of gets most of your running functions done. Does it do it very well? Probably not. But the Apex 2 Pro, I think they just cut it by 50 bucks. It's also a great deal. So that gets second place. Now, if you plan to buy any of these watches, please use the links down below. It is at no cost to you and it really helps support the channel. I really appreciate it. He needs the money. <laughs> I do need the money. He needs the money, please. <laughs> Click those links. All these watches have this other like extra bonus features and apps and things like that, which are interesting. They're not necessary when it comes to training for a marathon. I love the recovery time on the Garmin. It kind of gives you an idea of like, okay, did I overtrain a little bit? So that feature is kind of nice to like prevent you from overtraining, but they all kind of have this like little readiness score. The Apple Watch even has apps that you can download to get kind of a recovery score. And the Garmin does as well. They've kind of got like this, oh, how recovered you are from your sleep. And you're really gonna get the best data if you wear this stuff to sleep, but honestly, it's not really necessary. It's nice to have if it helps you kind of tune into how your body feels. But number one most important thing, how does your body feel? That's what I would take into account. This extra data is just kind of like cream on the cupcake. I, I, and I don't like whipped cream, but sometimes I do. The other thing is the Coros is the only one without a touch screen, so you can't really like move around, which is, I don't know, if you're wearing gloves, if you're running and your hands are sweaty, like you don't really need a touch screen. It's nice to have one. I mainly use the buttons on all these devices, except for the ones where you have to use the touch screen. But the touch screen is nice for when you're in smartwatch mode. Now, when it comes to marathon training, which one of these watches am I going to use and which ones am I going to toss out the window? I mean, return. I really want it to be the Apple Watch. They have this thing called like custom workouts. The track mode is insanely good, but having the action button that's just not reliable, like maybe 95% of the time, I know when I press this button, the workout has started. It's kind of frustrating. So since that's the case, I'm probably going to use the Koros or the Garmin. I would only pick the Garmin because the recovery time score over the Koros. But when it comes to data tracking pace and making sure that I get good GPS data when I'm in the city, I know I can trust this device. If I was kind of just like a hobby jogger and someone who just wants to run for fun, enjoy it, I'm not really doing workouts based on pace, then the Samsung's good if you have an Android phone. And then the cheaper Apple Watches are also good if you have an iPhone. When it comes to marathon training, I think the Koros or the Garmin are gonna be my top two picks for my main 
main training device for the marathon. When I'm done on the marathon, what will I do with these? Probably won't wear it. And this will be my main device. But maybe when the Apple Watch Ultra 2 comes out, the action button will work. This is the first of many episodes of my marathon prep. I'm going to start training. I'm gonna figure out what shoes I need, what kind of clothes I need to wear, the actual workouts, finding a coach, and then doing the actual training. So if you want to come along this journey, subscribe, turn on your notifications, follow me on Instagram and Twitter, at Shervin Shares. And since you enjoyed this video, go watch my video where I compared 18 different fitness trackers, just put them all to the test. Linked right here. Peace. Why are you putting on the uh, chorus? I feel like a, an astronaut. That color scheme looks cool, right? It's light. I kind of don't like the UI though. It's, this is kind of just like, like, can I only exercise? What else can I do? You know? It's a, it's a fitness sports watch. I guess. <laughs>